welcome back to Up the Cherries in All Departments. Now, before I get stuck into this video, here's a little bit about our sponsors, Dental on the Banks. find out what they can do for you, visit dentalonthebanks.co.uk. Now, every team has got players that are synonymous with the fans. Of course, we have seen throughout the years many players returning to clubs who have done so successfully there in the first place. Cristiano Ronaldo, for example, was a big, big one. Um, of course, was loved at Manchester United and then went back of course, that all ended a little bit sour, but he did do well for a while. There's also been players in the past that fans would love back. I know that, of course, throughout the years, Beckham was one that Man United fans would have loved to see back at the club. Hey, we'd absolutely love to see Matt Ritchie. Probably not Ryan, but Matt, yeah, you're always welcome back. But there is one player who, of course, is a former Cherries star and is rumoured to be up for transfer at the moment. That player is the one and only Arnout Danjuma. Now, Danjuma had a fantastic spell at AFC Bournemouth. He joined the club from Club Bruges, of course, where Scott Parker is now. Maybe, just maybe we could get him back. We can all but live in hope. Of course, in 2019, Eddie Howe signed Dan Juma, a player that we didn't really know much about at the time. He did make a number of appearances in the Premier League for the club, mainly off the substitutes bench. But it was the following season, after Eddie had left, after COVID had gone away, after madness had descended. Not quite. Of course, we were still playing in empty grounds. So we had to watch his fantastic performances on telly most of the time. Of course, there was the one game where we, where we was able to go to. Arnat Danjuma seemed a fantastic player to have around the place. He was always friendly, always bubbly, always passionate of what he did. Not just in football, but outside of football as well. And that following season, under the stewardship of Jason Tindall at first, he had a blistering start. Running down that wing, he was fantastic for the club. He was exciting to watch. He was a player that maybe we hadn't seen the likes of. Only a young man at the time. Um, of course, 23 years of age. He had the world at his feet. And so it showed. 15 goals later, out of 33 appearances somebody was going to come knock him. And that call was from Spain and a certain Villarreal. A man by the name of Unai Emre took Dan Juma away from us. We were gutted, but could we really keep him? You know, the figure that was offered at the time was, you know, 
extortionate in the words of the championship, probably not for the player that we had just sold, though. The player that we had just sold took Villarreal by storm. He scored his first goal for the club against Atletico Madrid. Yeah, that Atletico Madrid that is managed by Diego Simeone, um, a side who had been very, very successful in the Champions League. But Villarreal were in the Champions League themselves. Of course, we couldn't offer that. We were in the Championship. The same difference, but I guess, you know, going to places like Atalanta, Real Madrid, um, and places like that in the Champions League was probably a little bit more exciting than going to Rotherham on a Tuesday night. Well... Of course, Dan Juma was a revelation there. He scored his first goal against Atalanta, who I did mention, in a two-all draw. He scored, in a 4-1 win, his first hat-trick for the club against Granada. And also contributed to both goals in their game against Valencia. Dan Juma was really, really successful. Um... He scored six Champions League goals in his first season at Villarreal. The brace in the win against Atalanta in the 3-2 win put the team through to the last 16. And he also scored against um, a certain Bayern Munich as well. Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. Um, He did miss the second leg um, but against Liverpool. But Dan Juma was on the world stage. Things haven't particularly been as easy for him this season. You know, Emery has left the club. Dan Juma's made 10 appearances, scored two goals. It's a shame, but it looks like his time at Villarreal is coming to an end. But my question now is, would we take him back at AFC Bournemouth? Of course, there's suitors. There's teams that would love to have Dan Juma in their squad. Can they all afford him? That is the question. And what I wanted to do was just run through pros and cons of each, really. Everton have been linked to him quite heavily. Forest have been linked to him quite heavily. Aston Villa... Of course, because they are managed by Yune Emery, have also been linked. And, of course, Newcastle as well. But should we be going in for Dan Juma? And here is why I think we should be. So, let's start off with Aston Villa. So, he would be linking up with Yune Emery, a manager who got the very, very best out of Arnaud Dan Juma in the Liga. Also helped the club to get to that stage of the Champions League as well. And it would be without a shadow of a doubt that a Villa move would really interest. Of course, he missed out on the World Cup. um, So unfortunately, that might have knocked his stock. But at the same time, Aston Villa would be Somebody who I'm sure would be interested. Unai Emery loved him at Villarreal. And therefore, that is a very possible destination. Newcastle, of course, managed by Eddie Howe now. And Eddie brought him to England. He showed the faith in Dan Juma. He did give him his first appearance in the Premier League. But at the same time, he didn't play nearly as much as he would probably would have liked to during that first season. Of course, when Eddie left and Jason Tindall come in, he took that championship by storm and scored those 15 goals in 33 games. And we thought we had a player on our hands. We knew at the start of the 2021-22 season that it was going to be difficult to keep him. And... So it seemed when Villarreal come knocking. He only played 23 games for them that season. But Eddie Howe, of course, brought him to England. He was successful for Eddie, not just on the pitch, but 
also on the training ground as well. There was considerations made for Dan Juma to make sure he felt at home. And I'm sure that Dan Juma has ultimate respect for Eddie. Would Newcastle be in for him? Newcastle could sign anybody. Let's be fair. They've got the money. They are the richest club in the world at this moment in time. But would Eddie go for him again? There's lots of options there at Newcastle. They're already doing very, very well. They are third, of course, in the Premier League. It is possible that Dan Juma will be looking for Champions League football and at Newcastle, no doubt he would get that. But it's a question. Could he displace any of the players that have served Eddie so well so far this season? Might he want regular football instead of sitting on the bench waiting for his chance at Newcastle? That is the question. And that's what probably throws in the other two. Everton, a club who are in dire straits under Frank Lampard. He is favourite to get the chop by the bookies at the moment. And who can really argue with them, considering their form? Of course, Everton are struggling and he would probably walk straight into that Everton side. A historic club, a club with passionate fans, a pa- club that will probably, you know, help him get the best out of himself. But the question is, relegation for Everton would be big. There could be that wage drop. There probably would be at the other two as well, of course, that we're going to mention. But Dan Juma, I'm sure, would flourish in that Everton team. Can they afford Dan Juma? Of course, they are building their new stadium at Bramley Dock. And personally, I think because of the investment that they put into that, that has really hampered Frank Lampard's ability to sign players. 35 million might not sound much by these day and age. It was when I was younger. I remember Wayne Rooney signed from Everton to Manchester United, and that was about 30 million. However, In this day and age, it really isn't much at all. But Everton, can they really afford it, considering everything that's going on? It's a big risk for them, and it's questionable whether or not their owners would stump up the cash. Even though Liverpool, you know, local press are actually really championing this as well and want Dan Juma to go there. I can't see it. Nottingham Forest, of course, have been linked as well. Nottingham Forest are linked to everybody, aren't they? Let's be fair. They've signed over 20 players in the first transfer window. (laughs) What's stopping them doing it again? Well, at the end of the day, it is a different market in January to, of course, the summer break. They did have a situation where they were promoted with a lot of loan players. Players that were on the fringes, they didn't have that strength in depth. So they went out and spent a lot of money. Has it worked? To an extent, they are slightly above us at the moment in the table. But at the same time, they could still get relegated. And 100 million plus getting relegated to the championship is probably going to hamper them somewhat. They're probably going to have to sell quite a lot of what they bought in. So Dan Juma's time at Nottingham Forest, could be very, very short if he does go there. Would they try and get him on a loan deal? That's always a question for all of the clubs in this video. But at the same time, personally, I think that Forest won't go in for Dan Juma. I might be wrong, but I don't think so. Which brings us to the point, can we afford to bring on out Dan Juma home? Under the previous regime... Maxim Denham, for all the great work he did here at AFC Bournemouth, I would probably have said no. At the end of the day, Maxim was looking to sell. We didn't spend that amount of money, really, in this summer. And the main reason being, of course, was the club was being sold. There was probably rumours at the time. There was probably things happening in the background that fans didn't really 
realise about at that point. However, things have changed. And things have changed in the fact that we have now got Bill Foley and money is available. We are hopefully going to be going places and hopefully not go be going back to the championship. Would Dan Juma make sense? Well, I've had a look into this, and I think it would. Although clubs would be bidding, and we're talking around about the 35 million mark for Arn out signature, things are a little bit different. Neil Blake and Richard Hughes, for all the criticism they get by the fans, and unfair, I feel, sometimes, did put in there a clause. They saw something in Dan Juma and realised that what a star he could actually be on the world stage. So there was that clause put in, and that is 20%. How does this work? Well, what it really means is that if we signed him for £35 million, pounds, we'd basically get £7 million back. Whereas the other clubs can't do that. We could probably push the price up a little bit more. We could probably say we could afford to spend £40 million on Dan Juma because the other clubs would have to pay that £40 million. We still get 20% of that. So it is a win-win situation for us. But why not go back in for one of the stars, you know, who really shone. Fans love him. He's a great player on the wing. He was electric during that championship promotion season. And Dan Juma coming back to the club would be a statement of intent for Bill Foley and the rest of the team. So... Why not? And what would be the things against it? Yes, of course, we could still be relegated. Bill Foley says we won't be relegated. Of course, nothing in the Premier League is guaranteed. However, you've got to, when Bill Foley speaks and talks that confidently about the club staying in the Premier League, you've got to believe it. Dan Juma would be a massive step towards that. Who could he displace? Well, at the end of the day, we are we do have Jaden Anthony on that left wing where he was so so good. Could he play on the right? That is a question. And I have no shadow of a doubt that he could do. And I think that would probably be his position, especially with Marcus Tavernier currently injured. Dan Juma would make sense. Would it make more sense, though, to get Dan Juma in on a loan, secure our Premier League status, and then have that option to buy Dan Juma in the summer? That would make even more sense. We would be secure. We'd be starting from a fresh Bill Foley would be able to invest and also with the knowledge that we have got that basis to start off from, that we are a Premier League side, that we could attract more players because of the player that we've actually bought in a little bit earlier on. Dan Juma was happy here and he loved the club and I still to this very day believe he does. There's been times even during the hard times that Dan Juma has liked things on Twitter and Instagram showing his support for his former side. Dan Juma is a fantastic professional individual and it would make more sense to bring him back somebody who would be able to fit straight into that side, knows the club, knows the majority of staff, and really, really excel in the Premier League. And I'm confident that he'll do it. He's done it in the Liga. Now, is the Liga stronger than the Premier League? Maybe it is two or three clubs that are really competing for the top spot. However, Villarreal are seen as one of the clubs that are really challenging those top three of Barcelona, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid. Villarreal are really pushing towards getting themselves in a position where they can 
really challenge for the league title. Would he stay at Villarreal? Well, that is the question. He's done very, very well there. But under Kike Sentin, he hasn't really found his best form or the form that he found last year. Would he find that form under Gary O'Neill? Only time can tell. Will Gary O'Neill be able to work with Arnout Danjuma enough? Again, it's another very, very big question that needs answering. Would Danjuma be able to attract maybe a big name manager to the club? Very, very possible. But personally, I think this one makes perfect sense. And I want to know everybody's opinions on what you think of Dan Juma. Just look at the tweets that are going up on Twitter and the love for Dan Juma and what he did at this football club. There is no doubt he would be taken in by the fans. There is that cliche, never go back. However, with some players, I think we can change that rule. Do let us know what you think and send in your videos, send in your comments about if you would want Arnaud Danjuma back at AFC Bournemouth. You know what I think, but it's also up to Bill Foley, Gary O'Neill, Richard Hughes and Neil Blake to make that happen. And personally, this is a great opportunity. Would he get a good reception if he was playing for Everton, Newcastle, Villa or Nottingham Forest? Without a shadow of a doubt, I'm sure he would. But do we want to see that? Of course we don't. So that is my take on Arnaud Danjuma. And do let me let, let me know if you agree with us. But until the next one, thanks for watching. And we'll see you at the Brentford game on Saturday. <laughs>